Well, uh, hello, sir. We'll have a little chat about what we've been up to, go for a walk around, because wh what year do you think you were last year? I uh, must have been 2017 yeah. or 18 or something like that. So, since... Well, I came in October 2020, and in that time we've commissioned a new still house, a new filling store, and built four new wash backs. Wow. So it's been pretty, it's been a busy spell. But, um, like, in here, which was the old malt bins, which used to sort of start the tour, that's now been converted into the sort of new tun room. We've got four new wash backs right. in there, which we'll go in and have a look at, and that now is connected to the mash house. So. It's just, it's been crazy, it's all go, but it's the way, I think it's a hugely exciting time, I mean, for you and people that know the history of Ardbeg, this is a site that was on its knees, you know, it was a, in a terrible way and, you know, in really, really poor state and through love of people that work here and love of people that love Ardbeg as a whiskey and a brand, it's, it rose sort of from the ashes and now when you look at the investment the site's getting it's just a great sign of confidence in our bag um in isla whiskey as well and scotch mm -hmm. whiskey so it's, it's it's hugely exciting um so yeah it's crazy we've uh yeah it's, it's all good we've even painted the old still there although it's looking maybe a bit too shiny today you know? <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> it looks like a golden still today. well i was we might call it that it's the 24 carat they were struggling to get copper color so it's going gold maybe we'll say it's a marketing ploy so but you basically have doubled the capacity of, of our bag right? pretty much yeah. yeah i mean when the expansion started um probably about when you were here so the plans were drawn up 2015, 2016. There was obviously the new boiler house built. Um, we built the new mall intake, so the, there were an extra two bins put in for, for capacity for mall. And then what was the next stage after that? We had the two new washbacks put in. Um, so we went from six to eight, and there's now another four, so we're up to 12. So fermentation capacity is doubled and distillation capacity is doubled because mm -hmm. we went from the one wash, one spirit to two wash, two spirit stills. And uh, what's really flat out now is our own mash tun, you know, is doing our best to keep going because we've gone from, oh, well, when I first came, we were doing 16 mashes a week. We're up to 26 now. Wow. So, yeah. um, you know, just it's unbelievable. I, I mean, the, the growth. To say even 10 years ago, if you'd come to Ardbeg, we were probably doing about half a million litres of alcohol a year, lalk in production. I mean, this year we're going to be 2.3, 2.4, hoping everything goes well. So we're nearly five times the volume. But, the key, it, but it's, it's, it comes with real challenges because <clears throat> clearly... Mickey had a great legacy, you know, he's an absolute gentleman, he's a legend in the industry, a great guy. Do you know, the day we did a handover here, he said to me, he says, oh, you need to get the new still house running. Now, you don't want to be the man when that spirit gets nosed in 10 years, they think, well, we should never let a Mickey left, you know? <laughs> so we wanted to make sure everything was right because increasing volume or capacity is the easy, but it's making sure that everything's bang on for quality, making sure we have enough casks over to fill, because obviously we fill everything here, every every cask of our bags filled here on site. Um, so lots and lots of challenges as we've increased volume, but it's going well. I'm really pleased with the spirit that we're producing. So hopefully in 10 years time, it's all positive, positive reviews, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so the last time I was here um, with Mickey, uh, there was the, the boiler house was standing. Yeah. And apart from that, the, the new still house, it was just a skeleton, nothing in there. So I'm right, really that's looking forward. There. What, what we'll maybe do first, actually, I'm just thinking, well, maybe, we'll maybe go around no, we better do it in order, actually. Come okay. on, we'll go this way. Let's go for a wee walk through and we'll go and see if we can... Um, yeah, let's start at the start. Because it's, it's obviously a huge site by footprint as well, Ardbeg. So, but I know if the boiler house was a skeleton, it's quite incredible how quick things have changed and moulded. I mean, as we come round here, you'll see we've still got the barrel park or the cask stand here. Um, I mean, the warehousing team are busier than ever. We've got, uh, what have we got? Seven working in warehousing. Wow. Two, oh sorry, three of them have come in as almost like trainees to train between warehousing and the distillery. We had one retirement last year as a 
as are retired um, and we've potentially got another two retirements coming up in the next couple of years so we wanted to make sure we brought people into train so they're learning warehousing and mm. distilling so I mean what a job two years we had lots of applicants from around the world but it's the usual with our islands finding accommodation for them was the challenge so um, it's it's all go but they're filling we're four fillings a week just now so we're filling probably well last week we were filling barrels all all about well, we tend to fill American oak barrels um, and we're nearly 500 barrels a week that we're filling so again it's gone up a lot but again the wood quality Bill Lumsden make sure we're filling top top casks so it's been a busy spell for everyone. Are you going 24-7 now? Yeah yeah we've been 24-7 for a while we stopped um, who's not on, on either actually I mean Kalila's still five days I think they're the last uh, I think okay you might need to check that on your tours <laughs> but it's the way the industry's gone I think that especially Isla single malt but single malt right across us obviously is that Shivas just announced they're doubling it up at Aberlour and mm. Yeah, and Milton Duff as well, I think. So the whole industry is just in this boom phase. And you'll see it as you were driving up today. You've got Port Ellen Distillery getting rebuilt or completely revamped. Stills are in. Um, you've got um, Elixir's Distillery of that fork in the land yeah. there. Then Lafroy are building new warehouses. You come up here and there's more work. I think it looks quite big. It's a big site, yeah. I think they're, they're, they're doing everything on site, though. Mm -hmm. um, that's my old esteemed colleague Georgie Crawford that's obviously running the show there so I'm sure she'll let you in when it's open and you can have a look around but uh, I mean it's, 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 it's just genuinely really exciting times but we've still got lots of casks sitting here and, and, and lots going on and we'll, we'll take you up um, actually it might be a bit of a backward way to do it but let's maybe go up and look at the old filling the, the new filling store because we're obviously here at the old yeah. which we're still and I know it's a bit back to front but just because it's all up this side of the site we'll go and have a look first uh, because that wouldn't have been built when you were last year, Bernard. But you can see we've got a mix, like in the old filling store here, we've got the standard bicycle, of course, because the guys don't like walking too much. Um, SRWV number one over there, that's decommissioned now. So that was where all the new make spirit got pumped into and then reduced in there for filling. We now, all the new make spirits pumped from the new stillhouse to the new filling store, which we'll go and have a look at because they'll be filling this morning. Okay. We'll go and have a look at that just now. And then SRWV number two, this was always the re-racking or mature vat where, oh, I don't know, say we're doing a Nougadal or a Cory Vrecken or some innovation, we would maybe disgorge barrels at four, five, six years old into there and then fill into maybe first fill sherry casks or... Well, it's whatever Bill and the team want us to do, port pipes, all sorts of stuff. There's some interesting things getting filled just now. Um, but there's all sorts in here. We've got some single casks and bits and pieces getting ready to go out as well. So, But this building, this old filling store, which is in the old, we actually we were looking at old maps the, uh, not long ago. I mean, this the building here is nearly 200 years old. Um, and it's been used for various uses over the years, but um, as a filling store, it's nearly finished its life as a filling store because the two disgorging troughs, we're still emptying all the mature in here because all mature Ardbeg is empty just in these two little troughs and then it goes into a tanker away to the bottling hall. Um, in the new filling store, we have new bigger troughs, so which we're nearly ready to commission probably within the next two three weeks mm -hmm. this just probably around the time of face this will be coming to an end this building is a filling store so it's quite amazing like big big changes to come so yeah it's all go so just as we're coming down to the old dunnage warehouses warehouses three and nine um, which Warehouse 3 roof isn't in particularly good way and this is to be um, completely re-roofed this summer which will be the last warehouse roof and they've all been done so it's just three to be done but there's actually quite a bit of water ingress getting in so we're having to keep casks away from the wall which is no use because we need all the warehousing space because we've probably got about 16 17 thousand casks on site just now right. we can probably when these are all repaired you know get a good few more hundred in because we need all the space um, we keep a lot of casks here and there's quite a lot on the mainland as well depending on where we have space 
but this is where the scaffold's going up just now there. One thing that was a bit of a loss when the expansion happened was we gave up half of Warehouse 9 for the filling store. Okay. So these two cells, if you like, these two buildings for Warehouse 3, and we can go in and have a look, that's where we've got a lot of butts stowed in there just now actually. Tend to be stowing a, uh, stowing a lot of butts at the minute in there. And we've got, as we come past 1010X here, mm. warehouse names are big. 3, 9, 1010X and 11, there you go. But you'll see they the racked. I mean, this warehouse 1010X, these were built in the late 60s, 68, 69, they were built. So you can see they stow, they're about eight high, most of them, uh, the rack. But you can see there's a wee bit of space in here for some barrels. So there's lots happening as we're emptying more, disgorging more, more bottlings and they're getting filled up again so you can see mostly barrels in here mm. just with the space there's some hogsheads in here as well but we tend to we mainly we're mainly filling barrels at the minute hoggies are getting rarer and rarer to see now actually um but come on through i'll show you what's been happening down here so half of warehouse nine here was given up as the filling store Come in, they're actually going to be filling some butts today. Hello, sir, how are we doing? Hello. Bring you in. Hello. Hello. Let you get a wee shot of them in action. Look at this. What was the yield this morning? Uh, who's taking the. Who's taking the. Four oh. Four oh three. Oh, nice. It's a hive of activity in here this morning. So we've got lots going on. This is you can see the size of the new filling store. This was half a warehouse nine. Sadly we lost the, the warehouse space, but we've got an amazing facility now. We've got two filling heads, and um, so all the fillings are doing in here, which the guys will be getting ready to fill today. Um, great system pretty automated actually so it's tallying up all your liters the days of weighing casks in and out yeah. have kind of come to an end it's all uh, working on levels and, and liters when they're filling these butts so recording everything and i think it's like at the gas station it stops when it's full right it does it doesn't overfill look uh, there were too many warehousemen uh, <laughs> falling asleep <laughs> Drew, Drew, Bernard's just asking if it stops like at the petrol station. Oh, I said you were spilling too much, we had to get it automated. <laughs> uh, and come on down, I'll just show you. Th th this hasn't yet been committing, I see there's barrels everywhere mm. just now. But under here we've got the, the, the new troughs, the new disgorging troughs. Probably easier to see this way. That's so these weird. will be the new troughs when we're disgorging everything. So they're bigger, they're longer. Um, we currently just got things sitting on them. So it's a hive of activity in here, all sorts in here. Some IBCs filled with maybe single casks, ready to go. Something exciting for the visitor centre down there on a pallet. We've got some funky yeast as well. At the and the stank. So, so we've got two at the back. We've got, there's actually three tanks there. Come up, I'll show you. Yeah, sure. Hello, sir. How are you this morning? Good, good, sir. I'm all right. So this is the new, we've got three, one literally, if you'd come here last week, Bernard, we had this side of the roof off and we were lifting in this new tank. This is the new mature vat for re-racking. Well, so when we're maybe doing something special where we're going to empty out some ex-bourbon casks, some refills into there, and then they can go back down to the filling heads um, to uh, to fill a mature spirit into into uh, like a sherry butt, and then as you come round the corner, we've got a bit of engineers that I haven't tidied up here. That's not good for the camera. <laughs> But we've got the two SRWVs. So these two tanks are the spirits uh, for spirit receivers. Okay. So what we, I mean, we're now because production has increased. I mean, these hold thirty thousand bulk liters. So we'll get about. We normally fill about seven runs, seven spirit runs in each, and then the guys will fill. 
so we can just alter between the two of them so really good just to, again as things expanded you, you, we were in the old filling store there it was small it served its purpose beautifully but this again was all just about investing in the in the future and making sure we can fill and disgorge as many casts as we need mm -hmm. for demand so there's, this is going to sort of be like the new cask stand here mm -hmm. so there's a bit of concrete there's a bit more to go down and then what we're eventually hoping to do is move the tanker loading because right now all the mature stuff say we're disgorging an Ardbeg 10 year old everything gets disgorged on site and the tanker goes away to the bottling hall but it currently sits in its old position by the vat room lots of people walk about there and things so eventually the plan's to move that here and then that will be I see. the finished article in terms of filling and disgorging because um, a huge change the idea was to sort of move the traffic to the away from the right in the heart because I mean if you'd come probably when you first came to Arbeck you used to have the visitor centre car park right mm. in the middle you used to have all the malt intake uh, caustic lorries everything drove right into the distillery it's changed days so we've tried to just move things out so loads of work being done crazy it's uh, a never-ending feast of projects but it's exciting have, times have the operations changed through the doubling of the capacity uh, what well, in terms of uh, uh, how things proceed uh, operational no no not really they, they I mean we're still making hard big exactly the same as we were beforehand we've obviously got things like longer pipe runs so there's new pumps and things like that there's a there's more automation definitely in the still houses we've still left it so it's um the, the operator or the stillman in charge that's making the decision but there is much more automation so uh, you know it has to, it has changed from that point of view yeah. uh you run the, the the stills as one unit not uh, two units oh. uh, what do you what do you mean um like the, the the way that the stills are separated yeah the well what we actually did in the still house which we'll go and see is we replicated the old where wash number one only feeds wash number uh, spirit number one if you like because what used to always happen that was the sort of hold up on site in the past was if you had one wash still to empty a wash back where you're only going to take half a charge so half the wash back eleven and a half thousand litres um, you're going to have to wait as that's distilling before you can get the next half in sure. but that's the way we've replicated it in the new still house so one wash back will only go to one set of the wash still if that makes any sense so wash back one would only take say you're going from wash back three that first half goes to wash the one second half's going to go there as well so it's just it's an exact replica of uh, of how it was so we'll just take you in the back this is normally restricted for access but for yourself so we're sort of going to go down the, um, the other side if you like the the the, uh, the east the east side of the site Where you can see it's a hive activity now this is just the expansion here there's been lots of clearing going on this is all to get tidied up and there's bits and pieces so it's been a bit of change but when you used to come around here this was just a track and you had old warehousing here yeah sadly with our begs history so many buildings came down that we would love now um it was just the way it was you know at the time a lot of them were deemed not required and all that warehousing space now we would have loved and accommodation because at one time obviously there were 60 people living on site now we're desperate for housing there's huge issues trying to get houses but it's all go this morning because we've got Gleaner Oil in right. so Gleaner are delivering uh, that's oil we run the boiler on diesel we're looking trying very hard to get a greener source it's really challenging on isla though difficult we're quite limited with options but as a business we're looking at lots of things just now right and then we've got the malt loads coming in as well so yeah it's a working distillery isn't it absolutely so this is this was the new malt intake here um so what we've got as you come round 
new still house. We'll go and walk through all these buildings and show you, but it's quite different around here now. Okay. Uh, we've got them all intake here. So this is a pretty high speed system, it's really, really good. We're bringing up either four or five malt loads a week just now. So uh, all high peated, well, depending if we're doing trials, but vast majority of the time over 55 parts per million phenol, heavy, heavily peated malt. Greatest thing about our big, heavy, heavy peated malt, but you get this wonderful balanced spirit. You know, it's the PT paradox, Jackie calls it in the visitor center, she's right, this wonderful balance with you smoke, suit and fruit, you know, it's incredible, but right now that malt's going in, there's a magnet here, as the malt's coming through and up, dropping down into this conveyor, you've got a magnet there that's obviously just cleaning everything, making sure it's, there's no bits stolen in there, and then it goes up into one of the four malt bins, uh, up the top there, so there's, there's four malt bins on site, each holding 28 tonnes, so they'll each hold a, a full trailer load. Well, how long can you work from what's in there? Uh, you probably don't want to... S we, we will go through a bin within a week. But normally you wouldn't really want to hold anything past eight, nine weeks. Mm -hmm. They used to store malt for a long, long time, but now... I mean, it's a stable product to store. It's nice and dry. It'll be about 5% moisture. and You don't want any weevils or anything like that, so you yeah. wouldn't want to hold it too long. Um, but yeah, so this is all new, the malt intake's totally new. You can see as well, this is just hot off the press since you were here last week. The old condensers have gone. Let's see. So this is all coming, we're, we still don't quite know what we're going to do with the old still house, but just now, the old condensers, in fact they're down sitting at the front, we'll go and have a look. And this is the hot water recovery system, which we'll talk a bit about in the still house. So again, with energy savings, we're running the condensers hotter. So normally, of course, your, 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 wash, your wash condensers, you would just take water from the lock or the burn. Um, say this time of year, it's probably about 12, 13 degrees. And then you would cool that. That would just cool your uh, vapor in the condenser. And so you're gonna get water in the condenser about 12 degrees and it'll be coming out Again, it depends, 50, 55 degrees Celsius. We've changed that now for a, a warm tank and a hot tank of water, and it's warm water we put in the wash condensers. The water goes in at 40 degrees and out to 80 or 85 degrees, so it's super hot water out the condensers. And we use that for heat recovery to do for cleaning. Uh, we use that water to preheat the low wine and faints as well when you're charging the spirit stills. Um, the challenge you've got with it is because your distillate, if you're using hot water to cool, your distillate before the safe is about 40 degrees. So that then has to go through another heat exchanger to cool before you bring it into the safe. You don't want evaporation losses, you don't want to lose that nice, estery, light, fragrant notes of your spirit. So we'll go in and have a look in a minute, but we'll walk around so you can see what's happening. New boiler house. Yeah, that was the only one that was standing when I was yeah, last year. Yeah, so two new boy, two uh, wee chieftain, uh, like five ton boilers in here. Uh, we'll pop, we can poke your head in just to have a wee look. Yeah. So here's the two boilers. So they're running away quite nicely, they, 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 one runs on lead and they will change, they will alter depending on the demand on the site with the four stills now. Lots of capacity. This one's actually hooked up to be converted to gas, if we do ever get gas to Isla. Mm -hmm. We're hopeful, we're hoping, we need someone to come and build a big bio plant and make, make renew lots of green gas for us, but we'll see what happens. So we'll go around, so this is all the old steel work that came off the back of the old still house. So these were the steps up to the condenser, so this is all to go. Like I say, we're just gonna have a huge clear up just now. Whiskey festival in four weeks, this will all be cleared. And again, this is, it's a huge space now. 
It is. I mean, we've put the fence up between the new still house here to try and discourage people coming round just because there's a lot of vehicles around here now. Right. But these porter cabins have been here since the build, so uh, since the build of the new still house. So we're really getting to that end phase now, and it's just a case of tidying everything up. But it's looking, uh, it's looking pretty good. If I can open the gate. Thank you. There's the old condensers. We'll go and have a look at those in a minute. Ah, yeah. So, how many people do you expect for our picture this year? Oh, I don't know. I think Isla's going to be sinking, to be yeah, honest. I think so. Well, we normally get, oh, how many in an hard bag? Maybe a couple of thousand here, I would think. Oh, I don't know. But people that we, <laughs> people who I know who I haven't seen for years are saying, oh, we're thinking about camping or coming over. I think there'll be a lot of people here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's exciting. For sure, there are no uh, rooms left. No, no, I don't think. I think number one, Charlotte Street, will be a, a, a pricey, pricey place to yep. stay. Uh, so these are the old condensers. <laughs> these aren't usually here. You've timed your visit well. You can see there the tailpipe coming out. Um, so yeah, I mean, because we're in the process of sort of getting everything stripped, we've we've taken these off and then plenty good copper in them, these are to go away and uh, we're not quite sure what's to happen with them yet, something exciting I'm sure being our beg, we might do something quite exciting with them. Look at the corrosion in there. I know, well see that's all the verdigris as well, see I mean, I know but look, I mean you've got, I mean th these stills when they, when they came out, um, I mean this copper was thin, you know, they were at the stage where really the copper was getting very very thin and a lot of wear but because we were obviously expecting to go into the new still house but everything was delayed with Covid so we were doing constant thickness tests on these but you can see I mean it was all the grease and everything in there too. They ran a hard life, they ran very well these for many many years so it's going great. <laughs> right. So let's go, we better have a look through the building then. Let's go and see what's happening. Sure. So what we'll probably do is we'll go in through the mash house, have a look at the usual spots, the mill, and then show you the new tun room. So mill's running just now. Um, do you know there's been a huge amount of change on site? But this is the constant, the Bobby Mill still runs well. Uh, over a hundred years old and it just runs great it's, it's a brilliant bit of kit I mean what we do is every batch we do we do five ton mashes from the malt bins next door we're putting five tons in the big bin on the top and then that five tons is milling but then a couple of hours normally two hours that's milling done so even though production is going like this the mill is more than capable of getting where it needs to be so Roll milk. Had a few challenges with malt this year. We're now back on 2021 or now on 2021 crop, which is going really well. Concerto, come along and I showed you around the malt in those years ago, it was Concerto. Laureate has now become the new okay. favourite. Concerto has it was always the way with barley's where because they're quite genetically weak and susceptible to disease, they're always trying to breed something new. And actually it's an off, it's a strain or a, an offshoot of the concerto is laureate. Nice, big, bulky grains, lots of yield, drains well, low nitrogen. Whoever invented that seed, they're making a bit of money now. Perfect for destination. Yeah, good, good pot still malt, so. Obviously we play about sometimes with different malts. Uh, our beg obviously has done unpeated in the past, Glasda. The Art Core, the committee releases, 75% uh, low phenol malt, 25% roasted malt, dark, dark malt. There's no enzymes in it, it's almost been, you know, heated so hot in the kilns that you've just got heavy, heavy like black malt and um, gave us a pretty interesting whiskey with the art core that we've just released so we've got a great whiskey creation dream we're all trying things but now the mill's running really well um, 
standard stuff, you know, 20, 70, 10, we get fractions, everything's going pretty well in the minute, we're milling. Uh, and long may she go, the Bobby Mill. So Neil's just in the process of stocking up the yeast cupboard. Oh, I see. We, we, we're still dry yeast. So, so what they'll do is, this is like the yeast mixer, so it's Lalaman yeast we use, it's dry yeast. Um, we are 23,000 litres of wort when we're filling the wash back, and uh, we use 22 and a half kilograms of yeast. So you're roughly a kilogram of yeast for every thousand litre of wort. So what they'll do is, they'll, they'll, they'll fill up the bucket, they've actually got a handy line there, <laughs> the yeast line. And all they'll do is they put it in here, you mix it with a bit of cooled wort. Um, although, well, you have to be careful with the temperature, you want it about 30 degrees. What temperature are we mixing the wort? 30? 36. 36, right, there yeah. you go, there's a man that knows. Uh, 36 degrees, because that's going to help just activate your yeast. So, all you do is you've got a, like a mixer here, it's mixing everything, and then that just kicks the yeast into life. And then it just, again, it's all very manual mashing. Um, we're just going to divert that up up this pipe here and up into the wash backs. We used to only have the six wash backs, we've now got 12 three ton rooms through our big style, we had to try and fit it in. Hey, come on up, I'll show you what's happening. So, Neil was just saying to me they were on third water. Yeah, that's them on third. So we're still really quite traditional with mashing. It's still quite, it's still very manual, and it's still three separate waters for the mashing. Why many many distilleries now go to a continuous sparge where you well, we obviously we mash in 63 and a half degrees Celsius, mm. uh, five ton of five ton of grist, and first water is 18,000 liters of water. What you tend to see now in the industry is, as you've pumped maybe six, seven, eight thousand litres to the wash back, your sparge will start. It might start at something like 68 degrees and for the next couple of hours it just ramps up. It's the most efficient way because mm. you're sparging on. We're still three separate waters. It's an old mash tun, it's a traditional bit of kit. So first water goes in 63 and a half. We will pump 10,000 litres of warts to the wash back, and then we'll add in the second water, 80, 80 degrees Celsius, about 8,000 litres. We then pump that through to the wash back, and then the third and final water, 85 degrees, so you're going to try and extract everything you can that's alive, and it's 18,000 litres, because obviously that water will become the first water of the next mash. It's not, it's got sugars in it, but it's not, no, um, it's not dense enough, the density's not high enough, there's not enough sugar in that wort to, to, to ferment, so we give that as first water for the next mash. But um, right now we're on third water, so this is the far third and final water. When you're on final water, the rakes are going round as well, so just gently, just gently, you're just putting the rakes round and everything's just, because you're just trying to extract everything we can out of the, out of the draft. So, it's a great bit of kit and she's working really well. Mm. In total, 23,000 litres of wort um, will go through to be fermented. And we're setting, the temperature we cool to is about, right now 17 degrees. We're setting the wash bags at 17. And that's working well with that Lalaman yeast actually. It's growing very, very well. So how long does the whole process take then? Mashing just now is taking us from mashing in to drafting out six hours fifteen minutes. Okay. Which is sped up. I mean that hard big mashing used to be about seven hours, but the just the way we are doing it now is sped up drafting out and some bits and pieces just to try and get us going. I mean pumping rates have increased slightly. But we need to be a wee bit careful of that. We want to make sure we got nice clear water and everything so uh, we've played about we did replace the plates in here, the floor of this mash done got fully replaced in January. It's about a £50,000 project to put in a new mash tun floor. This mash tun went in in 1999, although we used the old 
cladding from the old one from 1961. So don't be fooled by the 1961. It was it was manufactured in 99. So it's uh, but it's worked a it's worked a hard life. And again, this is really now the sort of pinch point. The pressure's on the mash tun. But it, you know it goes well and it's it's going good. We we recently installed a like a chiller as well, which will help cool the water in the summer. Our bag in the summer has always struggled with temperature um, and getting the washbacks cool it off. So we've got outside the mash house now a sort of big air ch a chiller, which is going to help cool the water to cool uh, to cool the waters. So this is the newest project. There's now a door in the mash house. This is all new. And you come in to our four new wash backs. So this used to be the room of the old malt bins. So up until, well, the malt bins were taken out about four years ago, but there were big wooden uh, malt bins in here. They, they were stripped out. And this room just became um, derelict pretty much. We used it as a bit of a store. So we knew we had to increase fermentation capacity. We have the old uh, six washbacks which we'll go and have a look at. We built another two washbacks which are now 11 and 12 across the road. We can have a look at those. And then we built washbacks 7, 8, 9 and 10 um, and commissioned them in January. So GB Vats built them, of course. There's no other people you'd ever use for your vats, for your, for your washbacks. GB Vats built them. They're Oregon Pine, so Douglas Fir, uh, like all of them in here, really. And they're going really well. Really, really good. We've got um, 66 hours fermentation time. Lots of great things happening through that fermentation, really building that flavor that we want. Um, no, all is, all is going well with them. They're, they aren't steam cleaned as well. The, the difference with these new washbacks is there's a cleaning head, um, this pipe going into the sort of top of the uh, washback. Um, that is, is like a big sort of, like a jumbo head, a fury head they call it, where we just spray hot water 85 degrees through that and that cleans the washback. Because the thing with wooden washbacks is you're never going to clean, they're never going to sterilise a wooden washback and that's not what we want. So we want, um, we want to clean them, make sure all their yeast residues away and that they're nice and clean. But you're always going to get biofilms and, and bugs really in the wood. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's important when we built these new washbacks that we, they were wooden, they were exactly the same as one to six in size. But when we cleaned them, we didn't feel we needed to steam clean them every time, which is a bit of a change because you would always just blast in a bit of steam to clean. Mm. We were happy with these cleaning heads and it seems to be going well. So they're all at different stages. Hang on, he's just filling 12, so it'll be 16, 18, 24. So you have your washbacks in different places now? Three ton rooms, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. We don't have switchers here as well, which is quite unusual at Ardbeg. So um, there's no there's no fan, there's no fan blade, no switcher in here. There's no soaping, anything like that. Um, really? Just with the space of the washbacks, we get we're okay. The, the, we, we don't foam over the top because there's plenty of space in there. Fermentations have been going really, really well. And you can see in here, yeah, loads of activity. He's just filling, I was just trying to count back in my head the timing, so he's filling 12, so 11 would have been 6 before, so 6, 12, 18. So this will be about 24, so this will be this time yesterday this was filled. Okay. So you can, I know I'm talking nonsense, sorry. You know, it's 66 hours, so it'll be, this will be about 42 hours old, 40, 42 hours. So this is really, I mean, this is still going, lots of fermentation happening, which gives you an idea for, for times, because um, like I was saying, by about 50 hours, you're still gonna see bubbling in activity, but most of the, if not all of the sugar should be gone. Between 40 and 50 hours, your conversion to ethanol, your majority of ethanol should have happened. And everything that's happening after that is secondary. So if you go back to this one, it's a wee bit older. Still plenty of foam and lots of bubbling in it. 
Prius. But these are getting to the stage now where they're... Because that's right, because he's on 6, 6.30, 6. Yeah, so I mean, they're, 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 in a, they're in a good place, these now. And fermenting really well. But there's quite a difference when you go through to the new tun room, eh, the old tun room, which I'll show you. It's the control room where the magic happens, there you go. Mashing plan here, phone ringing. We'll not answer that, we'll <laughs> just keep going. Yeah, you can smell instantly in the old tun room, so. Oh yes. Washback one is finished. So you can see they are absolutely next to no bubbles yeah little little activity because everything that's happening in here is your conversion to ethanol completed about 16 18 hours ago for this one so everything that's happened in here is, is a secondary reaction it's your biofilms your lactobacillic your lactidat lactic acids forming <clears throat> there's you've got an amazing amount of stuff and you get this incredible sour, smoky, fruity wash. It is really fruity. Um, it's like smoked bananas in here or something today. You instantly smell it when you come in. And what they're doing in here just now in one is they have pumped the first half. So the first half of the wash back has gone through to the wash still. Right. And they just leave it in here. The wash runs, wash still runs take about four and a half hours. So once that wash run is finished, then the second half will go. So this line up there was the uh, That's the, the fill line, line yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the fill line. So this will be all getting pumped just now. And then very soon they'll be pumping number two to wash still number two. So this is also now ready to go. Oh, yeah. That's even more. Oh. Ah, we're making good spirit just now. Some good fermentations yeah. going on. It's going well actually in, in production. Like, like I say, we've increased. I mean, these are very, very old school uh, washbacks. You know, they're, they're they're not sealed lids or yeah. anything. And ah, there's lots of lots of discussion because they're you know the way it's going. A lot with cleaning heads are now sealed lids, but. They work really well, they ferment great, these original six washbacks. Yeah. I mean, some of these washbacks are 40, 50 years old. And you probably keep them as long as you can, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, did an, we do an inspection every year. We get um, JB Vats who build them. They've just been bought by Forsyths. Mm -hmm. um, JB Vats come in and, and do an inspection. They'll be looking for wood warm, like the condition of your bearers, which go across. Um, all that sort of stuff. So they are looking just to make sure that the woods in great, con uh, you know, in good condition. The, the new turn room that we've built that we are in, a lot more automated in here, a lot more manual. You can see the guys and girls move the pipe up as they're filling. You'll see because I mean this is next to go. This is um, this wash is ready to go to the next lot of stills. Um, so three. So I mean you're probably what's that sixty. 60 hours, 60, 55. So this one should just be coming to the end. You can see that is now starting to everything to calm down yeah. and die back about 50 hours, but still plenty fizz in it. You know, the, 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 it does ferment really, really well. It's mm -hmm. Great stuff. It's going really well, this Lalam and yeast. Lots of excitement about yeast in the engine. Loads of excitement. And we're actually, I can't tell you too many secrets, but we're hoping. We've always done great trials with Bill and there's maybe another exciting trial to come with yeast. I can't say any more or he'll kill me. So by the way, this were the times where the fermentation rested for... What do you mean, the, sir? The, the fermentation... Uh, yeah, the was... fermentation was in here. Okay. Neil was probably on shift. Were you on shift when the boiler went down for fermentation? Yeah, yeah I was. So the lids were... That's the great thing about not having sealed lids. You can throw them open. Yeah, well, Throw everything open. 
I went round a, I went round a Lambic brewery in Belgium where they have like the big open fermenters mm. and it's sort of the same idea they just leave it sitting wild yeasts and all sorts to ferment yeah so and that was great pretty exciting stuff so these are still going strong what is big change since you've been here is distillation sure. so what we'll do is we'll go through it and to the old still house which you'll see lies silent Jackie's in just now come through So we obviously we put the it was the 19th probably saying the wrong day now I'm pretty sure it's the 19th of March last year we ran spirits for the first time through the new stills and it was a night shift I came up it was a big moment you know I mean for all the guys and girls that work here but for the distillery manager there's not many times in your life you'll commission a new still house so really really exciting and since the 19th of March this place has been silent which I think is quite amazing in a way there's a lot of nostalgia yeah but distilleries never really stay the same you know things move and change and uh, I mean this still house is there's pictures paintings from 1902 and we're in this still house looks quite different to how it did uh, now but I mean the one wash and one spirit still held hard begging you know in, uh, in a good way for a long, long time. Mm. But the decision was made that we had to expand, even with the guys' working conditions, you know, they literally stood on a stool in the corner. You know, we, we've moved on a lot since then. But what we'll do is we'll take you through and uh, we'll show you the new still house, what we did. That's pretty special, come and have a look. The funny thing is, you don't often see a still house uh, that cold like now. I know, it's freezing yeah. in here, I know. Just mind yourself on the stairs. Sure. Uh, that's absolutely freezing, eh? Right, come on up. So, this is the new still house. So we doubled the distillation capacity from two stills to four stills. Two wash, two spirit stills. And for the last year, this is what we've been doing. Come on in, have a wee look. Hello, sir. How are we doing? There you go. So this is the new stealth. I've got new signs, Ruri. The signs have arrived. It'll go well with the lights. Uh, so it's actually quite quiet in here just now. That's it. Is, it's just yeah. one still on the go. But um, Ruri is now in charge of the, of the four stills so it's an exact replica next door pretty much what we'll maybe do is we'll go up so you can have a good sure. view look a good view so you've got wash still one and spirit still one wash still two spirit still two same shape same size same volume same run times we'll have to keep everything the same <laughs> Come on up now, as you can have a wee look. Sure. You get a right good view as you come on up. So you can see here perfectly you get a right good view of the purifiers so what we were briefly talking about earlier with that beg is you get this amazing wonderful balance of that peaty earthy burnt smoky heavy oily notes with these incredible citrusy herbal floral notes and that's because of the purifier we, we get lots and lots of reflux we encourage reflux and copper contact <coughs> so the wash stills are nice and tall they're pretty big so you're getting lots of reflux but you've got a slightly um your, your light lie pipe is, is angled down on the spirit stills you have a slight uh, elevated angle of your lie pipe 
and the purifier. So as you're distilling, you're encouraging reflux. Everything's fall, well, not everything, but a lot is falling back into the purifier and back down into the still. And we were having a look at the old copper there, obviously. It's, you're, you're stripping copper every time, clearly, so you're wearing it and it helps clean up the spirit. Who built them for you? For sites. Ah. It's a good waiting time now. If you want new stills from Forsyth, you're a good few years. I know. But completely replicated size-wise. Um, vitally important, they were the same. So it's And they've ran well. It took a while to bed everything in. It takes a while. Copper's got to oxidise. and You know, it took a good wee while for everything to bed in. You will keep the old stills? Yeah, we'll do something with the stills, I'm not quite sure, yeah. You can see um, on these on the war stills you can uh, these are where we're running this sort of hot water system. Mm -hmm. So we're running the, the the wash condensers hotter. But as I said, the distillate goes through a, a subcooler, a sort of small heat exchanger below and then into the safe, so it's really bedded in well now, running well. But as I said, one wash back will go through one set. So if you like wash one here, that the, the, the number wash back number two we're about to empty. Mm -hmm. First half will go in here, distilled. Second half will go in here and distilled. Those two runs of low wines is one charge of the spirit still. So. It's, it's an exact replica, if you like, of me. It's certainly compared to the new make spirit from the old still and the new Yeah, the, the, the new make, yeah. the, the new makes are, are are really good, right? And really happy with the new make. Uh, bang on. The old still house, um, when we were nosing that every week, you know, you would you, you're always going to get a slight variation sure. between nosings, but. What we're getting now, yeah, really happy with. First few weeks, there were some challenges there. There's no doubt about it. Took everything a while to bed in. Mm. We wanted to make sure, you know, our cut points. One thing that we looked at a lot in the old still house, your pipe run from the spirit still to the um, spirit still to the safe was very short. Here, it's much longer. So what we wanted to do is, we thought we might have to run the four shots slightly longer. With a pipe run, we tried that. We always like a short four shots here, just 10 minutes, because you want to capture a lot of that like really vibrant, estery, fruity notes at the start, the real volatiles at the start of the distillation. So we cut that back to 10 minutes. Even though the pipe run was slightly longer, okay. we were happy that that was, we wanted just to keep the 10. So there were a few things we had to play about with at the start, but now we're really, really happy where we're at now. Right? Job done. No more projects in a while. <laughs> you can see, but this, it's all been built in that, and it's all been built around the view and the sort of the work area for the guys as well. It's a, it's a, it's a real space for the future and for Ardbeg. It's a, it's a great spot. This working place, perfect. Huh? Yeah, well, you see, they had the big window open. The window opened, yeah. so the other day they had the window open. Nah, it's great.